Alrighty then, so to those of you who have started off by skipping ahead real quick to the intro, well, well done, you have skipped all the way to the set intro, and we're going to begin with just sort of an introduction with the style of what we'll be doing today, because right now, those of you who are paying attention, you've hit a link, you've popped here, go ahead and hit another link if you want to go to the start of the actual lecture. We're going to be waiting for some students to come in. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, Danville, for hanging out here with right now, waiting with bated breath and a smiley face. Very appreciated. So as students are coming, I'm going to remind y'all that today's focus will be on storytelling within a Let's Play, specifically how one can edit a story into being an effective Let's Play. And we'll have a whole nice intro on that kind of thing. Hello, Kuwait Moonwalk. Nice to see you here. Uh, I'm very excited about today. Today is going to be another focus on research discovery together receive music hello uh being it's another research discovery one together is because i've learned a lot and i wish to share with you guys and also want to tell you where i have yet to still learn specifically in regards to the fun storytelling so uh we have two people here now uh, i'm gonna wait for a rain when she pops in i think that'll be good i don't want to miss danville though because danville uh was kind enough to say that he wanted to jump by uh, if you guys haven't seen any of his stuff, Danville is a very successful YouTuber, does it full-time, and uh, does a lot of shadow content, which is how we met in the first place. So Kool-Aid Moonwalk and Receive Music, how are you both today? Feeling good? The weather is significantly nicer today, so I can actually close the window. Danville, thank you. Nice to have you here. And just making sure that the final student who said she would come will be here. Don't want to get started without her yet. Let's see, she knows it's going live. Hey, there you go. What's up, Arane? <clears throat> All right, we'll get started in this soon. Well, now we won't be hearing any Star Wars music. You know, I'll leave it open for now. You can also see, look, hold on, there's the sun. Right. That's what happens when you don't have the the, uh, the lighting as completely set. That's, I close the blinds a lot because of that. Anyway, so... Uh, to those of you who are watching right now, we're going to have a link that will go to this part, and then it will give the introduction. <sighs> I'm a little nervous on this one. Give me a second. Danville being here is exciting me. Alright, so storytelling is this treasure trove of incredible psychology that we're able to use to improve all of our Let's Plays immediately. And it's something that you can immediately do to become a better Let's Player, better content creator, better storyteller, and just in anything, really. It's something that has kind of blown my mind and become a mini-obsession. So today we're going to do a joint research discussion on this. I'm going to show you what I've learned talk to you about it, explain where I think it's incredible and useful and applicable to what we're doing as Let's Players and content creators on YouTube, as well as in streaming, and uh, something where I kind of want your feedback on some of these, and that's what the point of this is. It's for feedback as we're popping in. Danville, you cannot leave. You have to stay. I've begun. There is no leaving for bathroom breaks, food breaks, or if you're dying. I'm sorry, you have to die in your chair. So, let's start a little bit. Got the, the glorious glow right here. Hmm, so pretty. I'm gonna have to, let me just blind that a little bit because that hurts like hell. So, what is storytelling and what does that mean when I'm talking about it? Storytelling is three basic things. It is a suspenseful introduction, something that grasps you. In horror films, it's called the grabber. In YouTube videos, it's called the hook. This is something that is important because it gets your attention quickly. It doesn't necessarily tell you what's happening, but it gets you to be like, what's gonna happen next? It grabs your attention. Two is content or conflict. This is the thing that is influencing your hero to either enact change on the world or be changed by it and trying to prevent it. So are you trying to stop the bad guy from taking over the world? You're trying to prevent change. Are you trying to make the world a better place? You're enacting change. And the final one is resolution. This is the thing, did you succeed or did you fail? These three simple pieces create stories. Why are stories so fucking good? Turns out that they're built into us in the same way that we need to eat and we need to have, like reproduce. These various things are as deep as is language with human beings and that's why storytelling is powerful. So what, with this little bit, now that you guys have a basic understanding of there's an introduction, there's a middle area, and there's an end area, 
Let me show you what this looks like when we actually go into an experience. So here is an old video of mine that we're going to be using uh, to talk about this. Now let me bring myself back for a second. So bef this video will work as a Fallout 4 demonstration on how stories could work in a Let's Play. But I want to talk about Shadow Man first. Uh, for those of you who remember, Shadow Man's the individual who, well, has all this amazing content that follows storylines, but the thing is is that he doesn't actually do any commentary. His uh, keywords are just sort of SEO soup, and we all of us kind of felt like we don't understand why it's so successful, but I want to point something out that I think is amazing that he does. If you go ahead and watch this video real quick, you will have this experience of a storyline unlike, I mean, I've seen in many Let's Plays. So, right now, we have the intro. This is the moment that's catching us. The grabber setting the stakes. Literally, the catcher setting the stakes. So he threatens the player, and he's just like, oh, you better get ready for this. And then, we have the content. Fighting, knocking people around. It's the conflict. We want to take over the base, but they're not letting us, and so we're going to take it over. And then, resolution. <laughs> the resolution that occurs. The destruction of the opponent. Now, this three-piece setup is that story. We have the suspense, the hook, the grabber. The character comes out and gets you. Two, we have the conflict, the content. And then three, the resolution. This looks like so inside video games. Now, this is known as the flow channel. When you're playing a video game, you can see at the very bottom where it says player skill. Now, as player skill increases, kind of thing, or player challenge is how I would describe it, you can see that uh, the person gets stronger over time. You can even imagine player skill is actually a timeline. That the more you play, the more that you will go down, as you can see my cursor over there, the more that you will go down, this x-axis. And then now, this is the difficulty of the game on the y-axis here. Challenge. Now the more difficult you get in the game, before the player has a certain amount of skill, well, you'll hit this anxiety point, you know? Just a little bit of skill, but super high challenge. Ooh, I don't like it. Really good skill. Little bit of challenge. Ugh, I don't like it. I'm bored. And it creates this pathway, a channel, that if you're able to stick in between all of this, you will have a game that works really well. Now, we'll talk about why it's wavy, wavy, wavy in a second, but continuing with that bit, stories in, have the same thing. Tension in the story works like this. Over time, it gets a little bit more intense, gets a little bit more interesting, gets a little bit more powerful, and then actually around here we have what we sometimes will call the black moment, which is this point right here, which is where it's super tense and everything looks real bad. And I want to provide you kind of a demonstration on what that looks like in a game from one of my favorite games and one of my favorite missions in one of my favorite games. And this is the magician, the magician, the magician, the magician, it's not a word that I wanted to say, is from the forged quest in Fallout 4. Now this quest starts with this guy here. This is Abraham. Abraham has a problem. His home is under attack by crazy fire-wielding people at the old ironworks plant. They'll shoot you as soon as they look at you. They are terrifying. Now, you as a player have the opportunity to help him. Raiders are nothing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is actually a perfect quest that follows that tension, that follows the increase in tension over time. It also follows quite well, as I move my mouse over, skill challenge kind of thing a little and i'll demonstrate how so we've started off with this and we've initiated the suspense the hook oh my god i'm being under attack could you help me they're gonna shoot you right on sight and you as a player goes yeah i got this so you invade the plant it's a lot of shooting going on a lot of scary people breaks and blocks as you're at it 
Let me see if I can find it in that shot. But as you can see, you've broken into the location. And in fact, this place has an initial start, which goes not in, not in Diamond City, but you have to sneak in. Now, when you're sneaking in and fighting, this is that initial rising action of fear. You've had the introduction from the player saying, hey, you need to go in and save us. You need to help us. But, important note here, it's going to be hard. And so you as a player, and you start that. Now, the first room, which is what we're in right now, is a lot easier than some of the later rooms. And the reason why is because it's got this long hallway that allows you to snipe people. A viewer will be able to watch this from afar and see an opportunity where it's like, don't worry about the numbers on the top right. That's actually a reference to that specific video. Um, but... In this particular one, a, player, a viewer has the opportunity to feel that same tension as you go through it. Now, we've killed everybody in the room in this scene, and now I'm starting to get items. Well, that's in reference directly to this little wiggly line. We had that initial spike in the beginning, and then now we're going to get some items. And then we're going to go kill some people in another room, and then we'll get some more items. A lot of people, calm down. A lot of people, calm down. A lot of people, calm down. And so on and so forth. Finalizing in a massive battle with the big boss, which is very similar to how a Shadow of War thing happens. You walk into this door, because it's, it's, it's the important door, and say, oh my gosh! Not only has every raider that you fought up to this point not been someone in power armor, and not been someone with a name, but none of them had a flaming fucking sword. This guy wields a fire blade. Let me see if we can get a nice view of it. Uh, show me the fire blade, friends. Ah, you only see him cutting a dude's head off for a second. But the thing is, is that this guy is amazingly powerful. And he is that moment of what we call the black moment. Where you walk in, you're like, oh shit. This guy is strong. He's gonna be very powerful and terrifying. He is here. He is this moment right here. The, oh, God. And then we can see also, here. Now, this is a story that is in a small box. It's in a piece where we as a player start off learning about the dangers of the forge. We enter the forge, we have our first fight. That's chapter one. We have a second fight. Chapter two, and third, the big boss battle has been at the highest point of that fear and that tension. And then that moves on. And we even have that ne like that nemesis-style conversation that we see in Shadow of War. And then we have the fight and the resolution. Now, this is what I think good YouTube Let's Plays can do. And I'm going to read some of your comments right now. But this is what I think is going to be successful. And we're going to get to that right after these goes. Can't be said without it as more difficult. Let's see. What are we talking about here? Better than because see, seeing themselves, it makes them more relatable. Are you guys talking about face cams right now? <laughs> you are talking about face cams right now. We'll get to that in a second, loves. In a moment. But I want to focus to still on the story part before we get to this bit. So, the thing here is uh, the content of the actual story time, I think, can be broken out. And I want to look at these videos that I've done before. These are old YouTube Kublai videos. And I want to go through them and kind of show you how I think I should have cut them. And I'll explain why. Have you seen the Uncharted video? This is a fan film. It's one that a bunch of people got together and made with Nathan Fillion. When it starts off, it gives you a nice hook. It gives you some text and you're like, oh, that's a very Uncharted thing to do. And then it starts you flying over a bunch of water. Do you need that? Do you need that for storytelling? No. No, you don't. But it hooks you. You go in through the scene, and you see this guy with a bag on his head. But they give you a little side of the ring, which is an uncharted Nathan Drake indicator. <gasps> Showing the back of a guy. What's this? He's spooky. Who could he be? You can make a Let's Play like that. Start it off with this moment. They're going to shoot you on sight. And then you say something like, 
Raiders are nothing. Or appreciate the warning if you're me. But you have a moment, a character moment, where you introduce yourself and you're having this like, shit, this is going to be scary. And then the video has you breaking into a place. Now, you're doing so. You're shooting guys and you're fighting. In fact, this whole Corvega plant actually has a huge area that starts off with where you have to sneak in. But this is an important, an interesting thing about it. Oh, not Corvega, the Forge plant. I didn't do that correctly. If you look at this video, I start this moment 13 minutes in. I think that's a bad idea. I think I should have done better than that. Because the video actually starts with me giving a fly-in introduction of the character, which is fun, but I think that's a shitty start now. I don't think that's very good because that's not a grab or a hook. As a human, I'm like, okay, Jared's cool, that's fine, but I don't actually care so much about what I'm doing there. Versus here, I'm giving stakes a moment. It's the flyover into the water moment. A lot of times on YouTube, we see people go, wow, top of the morning to you, if you're uh, what's his name? He's brilliant at what he does. The the eye guy. Anyway, brilliant guy. Um, he is one of the PewDiePie style Let's Players, and he starts off with this bang. And so many Let's Players start off with this bang in their introductions to get your attention right away. Now, in this regard, I think this is better. I think that you set the story in the same way that we see Shadow Man sets the story with his character. It's with dialogue. It's with a human suspense interaction. In the same way that this one makes you go, oh, we're in Baja, that's cool. But who is that? Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> like, and you don't know this entire time. There's even a part where they say, get El Tigre. And you're like, who is El Tigre? And he's like, oh, I'm scared. But they don't show you. <gasps> who could it be? Well, I'll leave you to see the rest of that film. But the point is, is that suspense is built. Here is another chance of conflict and suspense. I'm sneaking into the building and looking for opponents. I should have cut the video from talking to the guy and then entering the building. That would have been a story worth sharing. And then, after taking that one out, we can have a moment where I'm just calmly looting around the place. We need those moments, especially because as we can see, tension in stories, it's good to have a relaxation moment. It's good to go back down. So you don't necessarily need it to be something that is as intense as constantly fighting. Now, then in that case, how do you move on to the next video? Well, I think you should start it just before the next fight. Just before you're about to initiate another room. Because something in like Fallout 4, each room has a certain amount of people and then they stop having that amount of people. And so this whole exploration portion of it, don't need it. I don't think that's necessarily important to the story. I think it's useful to grab a little bit so people have some context to the items you pick up, but I don't think it's super needed. Then, by the end of it, the next video starts right before the boss battle. So people are like, oh man, he's gonna have this big fight. And it might start with this initiation of this conversation here. Time's tied one. There's a reason for that. <laughs> But it might start with this conversation here and then fade out. But then the next time you start, it's immediately starting with the conversation. You want to leave people ready and transferring into that next piece. So, to repeat that, if you want to do a shadow of more or shadow of war style storytelling in something like Fallout 4, which I think you should because games are designed to follow the storytelling metric, grab a story from the moment the designers gave it to you. Boom. Quest. He's scared. Boom. Initial fights. Cut them in a way so they feel like there's an increase in tension and then a decrease. And then make sure that you end the video just about to start into the next thing so people are like, oh, I gotta watch the next one. Cliffhanger. This is known as evil lurks or the idea is where you're like, you know something's gonna come next. It leaves the suspense. But then you start the next video, once again, boom, conversation, shit's going down. And then you drop it into the fight, and then you have the resolution. Now in this video, I, uh, I did incorrect, I think. I, um, I fought these guys, and uh, which was actually, I died many times in this video. But what I think incorrectly happened was that I didn't 
go and talk to the people to finish up the video. I just sort of ended. Oh, actually, look at that. I did do that. <laughs> well, I, good on me, then. But you saw in the first two videos, I didn't do that. And I should have. It should have been more chapter-focused. So, <laughs> the thing that I'm still struggling with, though, is, is this truly the best way to cut something? I don't know. Uh, storytelling has this amazing thing where if you, as a Let's Player, cut along the quests that game designers give you, you will be following a story that when you upload it will be more effective because storytelling is amazing at putting forth an experience for a viewer. It's something where instead of, in my case, being in Diamond City in Fallout 4, which is my place to get more items, is it's not about doing that in the middle of it. It's about going through the fight and then the relaxation. And then going through the fight and then the relaxation. Having the initiation suspense moment before every video based upon the actual in-game content. As opposed to, boom, top of the more Judy kind of thing. Let me grab the guy I'm thinking of for that real quick so you guys know who I'm referring to. He's a radioactive eye. Top of the morning to you. He does not pop up for that. I'm surprised. Jacksepticeye, guy, Grazzi. He's the one who does that. Uh, I think that that, mo that motion is probably not as good as uh, doing something related to the content in the game. So, there's a bunch of questions here. Thank you guys for coming by and watching. I'm going to be answering these ones. This isn't an end. I'm just saying thank you because you're great for being here. Um, I see there's a lot of talk about the Nathan Fillion thing. I realize I went quickly here. Uh, but the thing is, is that I still don't fully know if this is the right method. But I liked it. So, let's see. I see that you guys are talking about face cams. I do face cams for two reasons. Relatedness and because of uh, copyright. You can't argue that it's not my video when I'm on it. So, let's see. Better face cam just commentating. Do, do, do. Generally, people who use a cam do better generally with people seeing themselves. Others make them more relatable. Some of people will say gameplay and commentary at this channel so much less views. Da, 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 da. Do, do, do. Content is more important. Yes, that is true. Though face cams are helpful in that regard, but content is still the most important thing. Shadow Man from last week, he's doing storytelling right, which allows for success with, without divorce. Yes, agreed. Um, yeah, I can only think of a guy who's done it with a Witcher 3 playthrough. Maybe just. Now, that would be a perfect example of a fucking storytelling, right? Every single mission in that game. It's like intro, end. Intro, end. Like, oh my gosh, my, I need to find a frying pan for an old lady. They start with a suspense, you walk around, you're trying to figure out what happened in the building, and then you find it. Turns out somebody stole her frying pan, scrubbed it clean to get the soot to write something with it. You give it back to her, she gives you a reward. That's a bloody story. I don't know if it's good, but that's a story mechanic. And that really worked that way. Um, Nathan Fillion, yes. <laughs> The only real Nathan Drake ever. So just to clarify, are you saying you would start the video with that Fallout mission, or would you give a preview of what happened in the intro? Uh, Kool-Aid Moonwalk, I think the way that I would do it is I would start with the conversation from the guy making the request for the quests. The one specific line being, oh man, they're going to shoot you on sight and not ask questions. That is an amazing grabbing hook. Awesome. That is going to feel really strong. For a viewer and from a player, you're like, <laughs> all right, I got this. I'm going to shoot him. Because like, that's the thing about Fallout is that you're trying to have that opportunity to go in and get stronger, which is your character arc and change. So with that conflict, you're told that this person will get you. And you're like, I can enact my power on the world because it's a game based upon agency and doing that. You go in and you start that action. So I would start it there. Finish as well, you would start a story, have a falling off action so you can acknowledge your accomplishments. Yes-ish. And the reason I say ish is because I'm not 100% sure how well that works for binge-watching videos. Um, I think it's really good when you end a story because it makes players go, whew, that felt good. And that's what they do in games. Whew, that felt good. That that felt really good. Like, when you complete the mission and you get items at the end, you're like, yes! 
But if you're a player like me, who loves the game Destiny, for example, you go and you play and you get a bunch of items, and then at the very end, they're like, whew, I want to do another quest. Like, and then you have another story spike, and boom, done. Closed. And so I think that that would work, is if you end the stories at the right time, people will be good. But I love the idea of doing it via chapters. So that forged thing, you meet the guy, here we go, we're gonna do it with beats over here. I think this might be better for you guys on the screen, that's right, left to right? Yeah, okay. So, here. I ask you to help me. So I go and I do the first fight. Good old fight. Now I'm, now I need to get some loot and stuff, so it gets a little calmer. Alright, now I'm gonna go to the second fight. Whew, that was good, gonna get some loot stuff, now it's calmer. Now, and I'm gonna pretend that this card scoots over some more. Now... I'm gonna just about to start the fight with the big boss. Hints at the fight, cool. Video ends. All right. And then actually do the fight with the boss, cool. Finish up the quest, done. I don't know how long that would be video wise though, which is another reason I can't quite figure it out. It might be like a 20 minute then a 10 minute video and you don't normally want to do that. And that's something that I'm struggling with too because I, I wanna make sure you end the quest at the end of the video. I never really did that before. I always ended it when I wanted to, which I don't think is good. All right, now to a Rain's comment. So to use your video as an example, how long was it in total? How long was the grind through the warehouse, roughly? How do you personally judge where to cut what might be labeled as grindy bits? I have two hunches for this. And hunch one is based upon what we would call vital, or like important information. Now, let me give you an example from, actually, the storytelling. Uh, let's see. This is a car race. Alright, let me scoot it up a little bit higher. There you go. This is a car race. When you start the car race, there is intensity, but then it kind of goes down as you're driving on the race, right? While you're doing so, you're starting to hit some turns and stuff. And there are certain moments of high intensity and low intensity. Now, when you're hitting some turns, if it's a moment of high intensity and you pause the game, I don't think that's a good time. I think that's a bad time. So if you're playing Fallout 4 and there is a fight and you pause the game, now if you're grabbing items because it's vital information so people know that you grabbed a rocket launcher, that's debatable. I think that it could be stay. But if you see in what the videos that I did, one of them, I straight up, let's see, there's Finch Farm. I was straight up in a Diamond City, which is a calm area. It's not a fighting area. So basically what I did is once I was getting to that sweet, sweet turn in, in the race where things were getting intense, right when I got up to it, I went, Hold on, let's go ahead and look at my other cars. And then I walked off and was like, No! That's the wrong time! And that's what I did. Um, so, what I think when you're talking about how do you cut them, 10 minutes is generally the video ma special amount of time that people say for Let's Play. I don't know how true that truly, truly is, but so many videos are so successful at 10 minutes a pop. So, you want to make sure that your pause is only going to exist for vital information that explains what your character is doing. I think a good way to imagine is if you've ever played Fallout 4 on survival mode, is you only are able to like leave when it makes sense. So if you're in the fight and you're like, I have to run guys, and you leave the fight and you escape, I think that's a good end. I think that's a character resolution. I think that works. But you wouldn't in the middle of the fight leave, go to Diamond City, be like, isn't this great, guys? There's no ten... Okay, and then back to the tension, right? You would do a cut or do some funny montage to fill that. So should boss fights be the climax and generally be at the end of the video? I think so. I'm. That's what I'm positing today. I don't have data to support it, except the fact that people love stories. That stories are the bomb. And people listen to them and watch them every day. People are manipulated by them, even. Here's a bunch of notes that I can share with you guys later. Uh, it's from a video, a different one. But it's got stuff like this, which I'm only going to show you a moment of, because this is too much stuff for you guys, right? It was just not enough information I have provided.
So, terrific. Welcome to the stream. I have yet to meet you. Good to have you. I've been going in and out, so I haven't heard all you've said, but it's a good time for a Let's Play video is 30 minutes. Terrific. To be honest, a good time for a Let's Play is as long as you can keep people watching. Whether that's 10 seconds, 40 hours. The important thing, though, is right now, uh, as far as storytelling goes, how does your story work best? That's the point. So we want to make sure that we have that suspense intro, that nice conflict action, and that nice resolution. Want to make sure that it goes within that flow channel. That would be this lovely thing over here. Let me pull it up again in a second. Boop. This lovely thing over here. That it sticks within that. So that a lot of people kind of go like, I need to stick to my perfect time. Did I erase something? I did. I'm going to have to hit Control Z a lot. You ready? It's Control Z a shit ton. There it is. So you want to make sure that it fits within that. So if you're in 30 minutes later and you're somewhere over here in boredom, you're doing it too long. Don't do that. But 10 minutes is something that people will sometimes, I've seen a lot of people say. If, it, if they should be 30 minutes, then is it okay to go past that in order to finish that climax? Terrific. It's really dependent upon the storyline that you're making. I think that you can make an amazing story in two minutes. Children are screaming outside. But YouTube has an arbitrary interest in increasing watch time. And so if you're able to hit something like 10 minutes of video, YouTube seems to like as many 10 minute videos as you can do as possible. So I would turn that 30 minute thing into 10 or into three separate 10 minute segments that are following this resolution thing. Assuming it's good. It might not be good. I don't know. That's where I need your guys' help, debatably, or I'm still researching on. I haven't yet figured it out yet. I am fascinated by this because the storyline of welcome to this thing, storytelling is going to make everything better that you do and you will be blown away. Check it. The conflict of who you are and who you can be, you're going to develop and grow into someone bigger and better because you have the power to change it using psychology of stories. And then the resolution is, here's the story, and stories work great. Blah, blah. That's a short story, and that was just a piece. But the idea is that it follows that fucking arc. So, um, it's really good. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. Let's see. It's a good thing I'm a visual learner. These graphs make sense. It looks like the Hero's Journey diagram. Hero's Journey is just one of the 16 types of stories that exists. It's, uh, and that's also more of what we would call a character-driven. Character-driven actually doesn't have the grabber. Uh, character-driven stories start before the story, in, technically. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a fascinating thing. Um, or I actually, technically, they don't start... Technically, grabbers start before the story because the character-driven would start differently. But it, let's say you're making a horror thing in YouTube. Let's give an example of that. That would be how I start a lot of these videos with action. And then there's the intro. So that action is the grabber. And if you're doing a horror or something, and then you start off, and then it's, you know, it's the story. But technically, if I wanted to do that correctly, I would have had that intro... And then, all right, we found the Finch Farm. And then the story begins. Just to make sure that's clear. Grabber is this action. Is this violent action, this moment that gives a hint at what the video is going to be. And then the actual story starts with the, be with the beginning. With the suspense, that hook bit. Unless it's a, a character arc. And then you don't necessarily need things to follow that same cycle. But that's that bit. Think of it from, um, this is going to be difficult to, I, I can't show you guys, it's too, too, too hard to see at the moment. But, um, let me make sure I didn't erase it. I erased it, didn't I? No, we're good. Anyway, I'm really excited about it because I have this image in my head of an interesting uh, live stream style channel that films, you know, an event, or let's say it's a couple missions in Fallout, and then you cut them into the stories 
so that people can watch them later. And I almost imagine like the Bastion deep voice narration going over them. That could be really interesting of a story and have some really interesting editing and style to it that has really high potential watch time and percent view time purely because human beings like stories. You're psychologically hooking people. Or not. I don't know. I haven't tested it yet. Don't worry about uh, not introducing yourself. Terrific. That's cool. So, Terrific, you're now asking questions that are outside of our lecture today. Primarily, I only like to answer questions related to the lecture. So, for that particular one, uh, just know that you're going to have to test. I can't tell you whether that'll change it or not. Um, so, but just to keep that in mind, if you have any more questions, please keep them to the lecture subject. Uh, Kool-Aid Moonwalk. There are three port parts of a storytelling, right? Could you repeat them again? Yes. I want to see if I have a nice image for you. Ah! That was not my image. I want to use this, okay? There are four images here. Oh, why do you? There are four images here. But just pretend the middle is... So, that is one thing, okay? Part one is the hook, the suspense, the introduction. This exists to set the stage. It would be like me telling you, you would not believe how delicious the Mai Tais are in my favorite bar. You're like, okay, you've entranced me. I won't believe, try me. That's what the start of the race is. We're lining up side by side. Then there's the content. Now, see, the thing is about these Mai Tais is that they are filled with devil's tears, angel's love, and newt lizard eyes. I don't play with me here um and they're it's they're the best things and you can only get them on the type of nights where it's so hot nobody can sleep like all right i can feel this it's like when i'm sweaty and in really weird objects and items and the flavor is like crumbling mashed potatoes little too dry but with milk and you're like uh, i can taste like gross but the reason they're my favorite is because when you give them to tourists, they think they're good, and their faces are like, oh, that's disgusting, and it's funny. You're like, okay, that's a shitty resolution, but it is a resolution. Suspense intro, conflict, right here, or content, and then the resolution. Introductionary fight, ready to go, ready to race, building the tents. Oh, we're going to start. Matches off, here we go. Starts off with a little bit less intensity. I'm oh, sorry, it's up. Starts off with a little bit less intensity because we're at the start of the race and anything can happen, but it's far enough away that it's like anything can happen, but it's far enough away. Then as the race goes on, increases in intensity because we're like, oh, we're getting closer, a lot of turns, oh, and then you're just about to get that final bend and it's really close and who's going to win? You know what a really good example of a story is? A game of Fortnite. You start off with 100 people Nobody knows what's going on. Everybody is like pickaxe out and they're like, I'm going to start in a bus. And then they're all going to jump out. But the thing is, is like, it's really like there's, a, there's not a lot going on yet. And then slowly there's some intensity, some couple of firefights and stuff. But it's over the course of the game. 90 left, 60 left, 30 left, 20 left, 10 left. Oh, it gets nice and nice and more and more intense. And we start seeing things like, stop putting threes there. And we get start seeing things like this. Oh man, the better the skill, the bigger the challenge. Oh man, the longer the time, the more tense it gets. We're at ten people. Oh god, and I'm currently just running to where that circle is coming together. This level of intensity is higher than the start, even though it's the low point. Oh shit, nine left. Six, seven, or that's counting up, whatever. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh, there's two of us left. And that's the high intensity moment. Cool. <laughs> I feel like that was a little less explaining for you, Kool-Aid. I'm sorry for that. Just very exciting. <laughs> I'm easily enticed by this storytelling thing. On a personal note, I'm kind of... 
reinvigorated. When we talked uh, two weeks ago about intrinsic and extrinsic motivators, intrinsic for those of you who are here, are the things that you like to do purely for doing, extrinsic are the things that you like to get the rewards for. Um, for example, I like to eat because it tastes good. Extrinsic, I like to eat because I don't die. It's nice. Um, the storytelling thing is intrinsically enjoyable to me. I get excited about this story. And it was something that I used to try to do in uh, these videos. I tried. I don't think I was very successful at it. Actually, that's not entirely true. I feel like I did really, these videos are great, but I feel like I didn't do the story as much justice. Kool-Aid Moonwalk? Uh, no, I enjoyed the nude analogy, but the examples did help. Let me try again. There's an intro, <laughs> and then there's content or conflict. And this is the thing that's about the changing of the player, or the changing of the hero. And then there's the resolution. Success, failure, so on, so to speak. So you said there should be a cooldown, a relaxation part from the tension, but I'm guessing that should be very brief. Dependent. Dependent. Um, and this is a thing where I'm not 100% sure on how it works in the real world of making a video. So if we look at this again, as the player's skill increases, you can increase the challenge, right? So we're a video, though, and we tell a story. Just what's nice is that our story aligns with the challenge of a video game. Did I fucking remove it again? God damn it. Welcome back. I need to find a way to lock these pages. Um, oh, wait. That's... Ha. <laughs> Found it. So... Um, the thing here is that that tension change is actually really dependent on the section of the story. And it's up to you to test that. If you're all fire all the time, that's tiring on human beings. We need a relaxation period. But I'm not 100% sure what that relaxation period will be. That's the testing on your channel that you will require. Uh, you're right that you do need that tensity. But popping back to this... There's a, there's a couple tricks that exist. Trick one is that you know you start lower intensity. And you know you need to move to higher intensity to capture the interest of the player, right? So that's why you have your, your grabber, which is, um, you know, flying over, flying over the water. Come on. Fly over the water, goddammit. Flying over the water. Strange cars, unmarked. Strange person, unmarked. Grab, grab, grab. And then... You have a bit of an introduction into what's going on. The character, the talking, the humor, the personality. You have conflict and fight. Then you have a tension down. So after this fight, he gets up. And he's relaxed. So you know that after the fight, you relax it. But how long? Well, um, they did it from 8 minutes to... They seem pretty pissed about the bracelet. Yeah. About 10 minutes and 40 seconds. Because they had some good storytelling that they were able to put in there. So... They had information that was needed. So the way that I would say is you need as much information as... There it is. The trick is that you follow what the game gives you. If we're playing Fallout 4 and you kill a bunch of people in a room and you it takes you about 10 seconds to loot everything, on to your next room. If it takes you 5 minutes to loot everything, on to your next room. However, watch what happens in your audience retention graphs. Do people leave there? Are they bored? Did you get bored when you watched the video? That kind of thing. I used the Nathan Fillion thing a lot. It was very helpful for this when I was trying to learn. So do we have any other questions related to this? Um, was this helpful? I guess is another thing too, because I'm kind of figuring this out with you. Um, I don't, Kool-Aid, I don't know the best time for, you know, like the relaxation thing. I think it's the time that the game sets it because somebody 
very, very extensively researched and worked on that part. But if you imagine a game like Fallout 4, which has so much walking in it, so much open world exploration, where do you put that? It has quiet moments, and those are amazing. Do those fit in the story? I don't think they would in a YouTube, necessarily. But I do think they would in a stream. I think those moments are really important. Because it allows for communication between the player and the chat. Think about it from the point of Fortnite again. Fortnite is considered to be a fantastic streaming tool because it starts off low intensity when you can focus on chat and talk and it builds into high intensity when you cannot. Think of it from that point of view. You start off walking, it's quiet, you're exploring, and you run along. Oh, that's a nice guy in a hut, that's cool. Talk to the guy in the hut, have a good chat, get a mission. But then do you have to walk across the map to get that mission? Fast travel. Cut the video. Then move forward. Um, and then do the mission, have the resolution. I think that's the way to do this from what I've researched. I'm going to be testing this. I've actually started testing this on some shadow content already at work. Uh, which, so far, I don't know how successful it's been. Uh, it's, it's only the second day. And it has as many views as like a live stream does. But it probably doesn't have the watch time. So we'll see. Now I'm just scratching the back of, my, of the chair. Let us know next week. Yes. Danville. Yeah, so... Well, first of all, Rain. Yeah, I'll let you know. Uh, I can just... I'll be able to show you because it'll be public. Um, Danville. Yeah, it's... um, That's a human reaction. It's... It, like, the best stuff... Does this. <laughs> There's a joke from How I Met Your Mother, the sitcom, where Barney says, I don't know why people want to do this. I think you should go up and just keep going up. And the thing is, is that the whole, the joke is that he makes music and he does that and everyone's like, this is really bad. <laughs> like, I can't appreciate anything right now. Kind of like in the way if you eat a lot of food and you're full and someone goes, would you like to have a delicious extra meal? You're like, I'm full. Wait till I'm hungry. <laughs> think of it like that. You need to eat your action scene and then you need to digest. And then you begin, and the beginning right before you do is the person being like, are you ready to have more food? Mm, smell good? And you're like, oh, yes it does. I love how I met your mother. Good. Huh, there you go. I'm speaking directly to you, Danville. So. <laughs> do we have any more questions? Any other bits in that? Also, to those of you who've been paying attention or asked about it, how I was, I've been thinking about creating a Let's Play channel that has the connection to the teaching. I haven't quite figured out how the business side of that works, but this whole discovery has really driven me into understanding what I think I could do and how to do Let's Play in an interesting way uh, via this storytelling thing, because I'm excited about it. It's intrinsically interesting to me to make these stories. So I'm very curious if it clicks, because if it's intrinsically interesting, the extrinsic just becomes a form of optimization. Uh, and for, uh, what was your name again? Cherific? Cherific. Yeah, Cherific. I highly recommend you watch the intrinsic extrinsic uh, motivation thing. It was, it's like two weeks back. It's, a one of, it's, our, it's on YouTube. It's here. It's in this channel. Uh, I think that was one of the most useful ones for me to teach because it was all about how to, you know, Ensure that you have the engine running that drives your channel, which is you, making sure that works. And it's very important. Danville, I think since you're a professional and full-time, I think you're probably good, but you feel free to watch it too, because I think it's one of the better ones. Um, that's all the music you have, or all the, excuse me, all the questions you have. Thank you, Kool-Aid. It could work with a shorter game first to have more things set up without the lessons being too long. I'm not sure how to do it yet. I'm, uh, I'm actually leaning in the direction of um, having the videos come out that are just gaming videos and then having a live stream lesson that talks about what I was thinking of doing and the data on them. Terrific, yeah, go for it. But So uh, to, to receive music syncs, trying to combine Let's Play with a teaching thing, 
And for Danville, if you're curious as to why, it's because I think that that has a much bigger reach. And so if I can teach people by getting them attention for the other stuff first, I think that's really helpful. Plus, it sounds fun. So, yeah, but I'm thinking about actually just, like, playing a game that I think has good SEO value and popularity and then trying the storytelling thing with it. And then you, and then later, kind of almost a post mortem. Like this is how well these did. And this is why I think so. And this is the lesson I think is most important about them this week. See how that goes. It sounds fun, which is the intrinsic part, which is important. Also, it'd be nice to just put up some gameplay stuff again, <laughs> because these live streams I've tried looking at the data on, and it's really hard to get quality data off of them. Though the last one we had people watching for the entire forty minutes, which was really useful. Uh, but it, which made me think, hey, I want to do more of these kind of style where they're super casual because they seem to be do, doing better that way. Anyway, any more questions? I'm going to then go have dinner. I'm hungry. I am the duck of Duck Hunt. Uh, next Tuesday. Terrific. Unless you want to catch my work one, which is Thursday. But that one's, that's Shadow of War. We're not talking about this stuff. Um, and that's on a different channel. But this one, this one, this one, this one, this is, this will Tuesday. Every Tuesday I'm doing these. So I'm happy to have you here, Terrific. And Kool-Aid Moonwalk, thank you for inviting someone to be checking it out. Good night, Orain. Thank you for coming by. You haven't asked many questions. Yeah. Well... For those of you who are in the Discord and who are part of the classes and that kind of thing, let's talk more about this too there. Um, this is a burgeoning thing in my research. I think it also has the potential of being pretty big uh, because it follows, I mean, the way people do everything. Oh, uh, this channel is called Kublai Khan with two O's. Terrific. Probably should just in this. I've gotten very tired about the thumbnails. I've been doing. This is the video specific terrific I was referring to. I think it's pretty funny when uh, you get more into the concept over the video thumbnail and stuff. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you guys for coming by. It was a joy to have you. Uh, if anybody has made it this far for on the VOD, thanks for coming. We'll see you again next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And yes, I am interested in trying these other videos and things and doing more um, fun stuff related to even maybe gameplay. We'll see, but I'm learning. Danville, shout out to you. Everybody should check out his channel. He's a nice, successful quality streamer. Probably going to be doing some Fallout 76 success in the future because uh, I like that game, and he likes that game too, I think. Um, that's how that works. And yeah, terrific. Thank you for coming by. It was good to have you here. Steve Music, Arrain, Kool-Aid Moonwalk, always a pleasure. Bye. I gotta scroll over. <laughs> On to Netflix binging. Yeah. Good fun. <laughs>